I'll go ahead and start with Nick. So Rob Allen gave us a taste, but can you give us some more information on what exactly you're doing with the Central Bank of Australia? Yeah, absolutely. So we are very honored to be included in the pilot program for the CBDC, uh, also known as the EAUD down here in Australia. And essentially we are part of a group of 14 submissions that were solicited through the DFCRC, which is working very closely with, uh, with the RBA. And our particular use case is one in the construction sector. Uh, we have built a protocol that allows in effect a digital escrow to greatly reduce the risk involved in long supply chains in the construction industry. I got you. So it, it certainly sounds like a good use case, but you know, why does this have to be done on a DLT? Why can't it be done with traditional technology from Web2? Yeah, look, that is a very, very important question. And the whole reason we wanted to be involved with this was to demonstrate the benefit of having these underlying, in terms of the CBDC, what well, that provides this underlying proof of reserves function um, in, uh, in tokenized form that you just can't achieve with a Web2 solution. Another thing we think is interesting is the way that we have built this digital escrow, the collateral that is placed in that escrow account remains on the balance sheet of the depositor. Now, in a traditional Web2 world, you cannot achieve that. Uh, you can't earmark collateral uh, in the way that you can by switching fiat into stables and dropping them into the smart contract. You can't do that with, with liquidity that remains on the balance sheet of a large construction company because that liquidity is fungible. You can't separate it or earmark it. The only real way you could achieve that is by moving it off your balance sheet into a separately managed escrow account with a trustee sitting over the top of it. And then it's, then it is quite literally off your balance sheet. It's into a separate, uh, it's into a separate trust account. So the ability to do this and to program the money, to program this collateral with tokenization uh, and uh, in the stablecoin form that it is, that's the big unlock that we see is really interesting. And then you add that layer of CBDC underneath with proof of reserves from a, a central bank issued digital currency. It's quite a powerful solution. Understood. So I have another quick question. Why did you decide to build your proof of concept on Hedera? Yeah, so the main thing for us is really the enterprise grade solution that Hedera is. So, you know, we're dealing with a space where some of the cohorts in our uh, in our use case are not particularly Web3 native or not Web3 native at all. I mean, the end the end construction company, bless them, they're renovating bathrooms in an aged care facility. Um, if we start talking to them about you know, scary cryptocurrency and, uh, you know, and things like that, then they could they could get scared off the project. So we wanted to go with a chain that was overtly enterprise grade. You know, when you look at the the, the strength of the bodies on the governing council, you know, this is a, a big confidence builder, not only for the end users in our solution, but when we're talking to banks about what we're doing, when we're talking to the DFCRC and the RBA themselves, being able to say, well, look, we're building on Hedera. Uh, don't panic anybody. It's fine. This is a robust enterprise grade, fast, low cost um, solution. It's just it, it's a big confidence builder. So we're delighted to be to be building on such a platform. Good to hear. Good to hear. So, Nico, I want to move on to you. You know, digital currencies are certainly getting a lot of attention from central banks at the moment. Why do you think this is the case? So I started my career in banking um, and I did lots of different roles within banks. And so I can tell you firsthand that there are so many ways that digital currencies can save a lot of time, a lot, a lot of money in banks. Um, and I think one of my old banking colleagues put it nicely that, that blockchain is just a glorified accounting system. You know, it, it shifts value automatically, manually, quickly and securely. And something that's done traditionally by big teams and, you know, uh, lots and lots of procedures and, and compliance and things like that to make sure humans are abiding by the rules. It can be done by, you know, a few lines of code. So I think there's just costs. I think selfishly banks and central banks just want to save costs. And it's just a huge way to, to tick those compliance boxes as well when you do take humans out of the equation. So a stat from McKinsey uh, says that, you know, 400 billion can be saved each year um, from financial institutions just by, by moving away from the physical cash infrastructure um, at the moment. So again, those savings are just, you know, huge, huge money. Um, and the construction use case that these, these guys are talking about, we're talking about single transactions of, you know, millions of dollars, you know, huge transactions. And when this money is borrowed, you know, with high interest rates sometimes in the construction industry, even a couple of days um, over a weekend and things like that, where you can't get the, the money back quickly, 
again, that's a huge amount of money from the end, end user as well. So I think it just saves money, hassle and time all around. Um, and I think I'll stop there. But the, the, the potential to save money is just, is just astronomical, which is why I, I left the TradFi uh, industry and moved into the Web3. So very, very excited by this use case. Well, we're certainly excited as well, Nick. We're certainly pulling for you to stand out in this pilot. I know there's all kinds of different programs, but we want to make sure that you're highlighting the potential for Not Centralized and Hedera as well. Either way, guys, thank you so much for swinging by. We really appreciate you coming by and explaining the pilot in a little bit more detail. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. And those T-shirts. Get us some of those T-shirts, my friend. Yep. No exactly. problem. Sounds good. I'm now posting these interviews of Hedera Builders independently to my channel. The community, influencers, and media outlets are free to use this content to spread the word on what's being built on Hedera. Once they're all uploaded, you'll be able to go to my channel and search for whatever topic or team you're interested in to find more information. Or you'll be able to get the most recent Hedera news by watching the latest HBAR Weekly update. So check them out.